here. And you're having trouble problems with that mechanism. I think something that will help is putting in the alpha symbols and the asterisks. So the alpha symbols and asterisks in this picture. Good. Oh, no, not so good. Yeah. Good, and we might as well asterisk this, because this is the former carbonyl oxygen that got attacked. Good, now put those same symbols in this picture. So I think that was the, um, the problem that you had with the two steps of the mechanism was taking the wrong proton. Taking the wrong proton. We have to take the alpha proton. The best way to make sure we're taking the alpha proton is to keep labeling the alpha carbon. If we keep labeling the alpha carbon, that makes it much easier to keep track of where that alpha proton is. Base to always keep taking the alpha proton. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. This is a perfectly standard type of reaction. What was the name of this reaction? Intramoleculae. Um, we are talking oh, no, aldol. Yeah, aldol. Yeah, it's an aldol condensation, but this is an intramolecular aldol condensation. That's a perfectly typical type of reaction like you might see on the test. Um, because here are the two aldehydes that are attacking each other are in the same molecule, so it's intramolecular. By the way, to review, what was the driving force that allowed us to have a neutral oxygen as the leaving group here? The hyperconjugation, because we had a double bond there. And so if we create another double bond, it would be right. easy to change. That's right. Now, the name for that is just conjugation. Okay. Hyperconjugation is a different phenomenon. This is just called forming a conjugated molecule. Nature likes forming the conjugated molecule. All right, good. So I think we made a lot of progress on that. But again, the thing that can really help you to avoid mistakes is keep labeling the alpha carbon that's acting like the nucleophile in every single picture and keep labeling the carbonyl carbon or former carbonyl carbon that's acting like the electrophile in every single picture. And the oxygen that used to be the carbonyl oxygen, at least until you get very comfortable with this reaction. But until you're very comfortable with this reaction, it's very helpful to keep putting in those labels so we can keep track of what's going on in the reaction. Okay. Again, if we had even more trouble, we could have put in some numbers here to make sure we're getting the right things. How did we know we were going to get a five-membered ring? Well, just kind of by counting, from the alpha carbon to the carbonyl is one, two, three, four, five. I think a lot of people might have made a six-numbered ring here, because they don't realize that this carbonyl carbon is not part of the ring. So again, numbering here might have helped you uh, with that, to make sure we're getting the right numbers of carbons. Uh, and of course, you're supposed to know how to do a retro aldol on this as well. You should be able to go from here back to here. That's something we didn't really get too much chance to practice, but uh, the mechanism for that is in the handout. So that's something you can practice on your own. Do the reverse, reverse bit for each. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype, and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.